All right, so we've seen a new rule called Le Chatelier's Principle that talks about if a system is at equilibrium and then you throw off the equilibrium, how does the system try to recover? And when we throw off an equilibrium by adding something or taking something away, we say that we've put a stress on the system. And Le Chatelier's Principle says the system will always react in a way that tries to reduce or eliminate that stress. And so we tend to draw arrows when we're solving questions like this. Let's see what we have. We have chromate and acid reacting with dichromate and water, or producing dichromate in water. And they say, what happens if you add hydrochloric acid to the above reaction? Well, there's no mention of HCl in this reaction, but if you put HCl in water, it immediately splits up because it's a top six acid it dissolves into hydrogen ions and chloride ions. Now, we don't care about the chlorides. This reaction doesn't have any chlorides in it, but it does have hydrogen, so adding HCl is equivalent to... One second... us adding excess hydrogen to this reaction. And when you put excess hydrogen in, the system immediately fights back and says, I'm going to try to get rid of that hydrogen. The system can use up hydrogen. And if it's using hydrogen, it will also use chromate at the same time. You're always going to use an entire side will always go in the same direction all at once. So all the reactants will go down. And if you're using up reactants, you must be making products. So this is how we show what the system would do. The red is us. We intervened by adding hydrochloric acid. So this is the stress, and then the blue happens after, and that's the system trying to recover and undo this stress. It will consume chromate and hydrogen ions, it will produce dichromates, and it will produce water. Now here's a different one. What if we added dichromates? So what if our stress the system's at equilibrium and then suddenly we dump in a bunch of dichromate ions? Again, the system wants to cancel out this stress. It's going to try to use up dichromates. If you're using up dichromates, the entire side has to go in the same direction, so it must also use up water. And that means it will produce hydrogen ion and chromate ions. So adding dichromate will shift the reaction towards the left. It'll consume products and give us more reactants. All right, same thing here. We've seen this reaction before, but now they've put in heat for it. This is a thermochemical equation, and it's endothermic. And this is actually not too hard to handle, because you can treat heat just like a chemical. This says that this reaction will use up PCL5 and energy, as in heat, in the process of making PCL3 and chlorine. So if you're doing increased temperature, if we put this entire if we put this reaction in a oven or on a hot plate or something like that, so we're adding heat, we're doing that. We put in excess heat and now the system is going to use up that heat. It will use up PCL5 it will produce the things on the right side. Right? So in these reactions you always have it's either left side down, right side up, or the or vice versa. And in this it always has to work so that you're opposing the stress. The Chatelier's principle says the system will always oppose whatever the stress is. So if you add heat, the system will go down on the left, up on the right, because that will consume the excess heat that we put in. So increasing temperature will make the equilibrium go right, or you can say down, down, up, up. If we add chlorine, here's our stress. We've put in some excess chlorine. What does the system do? Well, it'll want to use up chlorine. And if it's using up chlorine, it must use up everything else that's on that same side. It will produce phosphorus pentachloride, and it will produce heat. So this one will go left. The equilibrium will go towards the left, or the reaction will go towards the left, or you'll get up on the reactants, down on the products. 
Uh, if we had PCL5, so now our stress is we have too much PCL5. The system wants to get rid of it, so it will consume PCL5 and heat. The surroundings will get colder. We'll produce PCL3 and we'll produce chlorine. So that one will go, we can say the reaction will go to the right or that the reactants will go down while the products go up. And last one is a trick question. The presence of a catalyst doesn't do anything to an equilibrium mixture. If you have a reaction that is not at equilibrium, where you have the curving lines as everything tries to find its equilibrium level, the presence of a catalyst means you will get to that equilibrium faster. It means these curves will get down to their equilibrium level in less time. But the, equi the equilibrium level itself will be the same. And if the reaction's already at equilibrium, then it won't even care if you add a catalyst. So the presence of a catalyst does nothing to an equilibrium mixture. Okay, a couple more of these. We have iron-3 ions, and I believe this is called thiocyanate, but I'm not sure. I'll just say SCN. What color would the solution be if a crystal of KSCN was added to the equilibrium mixture? Well, if you add KSCN, and if it's soluble, if it dissolves in water, then it'll break up into potassium ions, which we don't care about because there are none mentioned, and SCN ions. So technically we're adding this. What will the system do? It'll want to use that up. So this side goes down, this goes down, and the iron compound will increase. So the reaction will go to the right in response to that. Now they ask about the color that will appear when this happens. On the left side of this, when there's a lot of iron and SCN, we have the pale yellow color from the iron and nothing from the SCN, so this side essentially looks yellow. The iron compound looks red. So if the equilibrium shifts to the right or the reaction goes to the right, the yellow color should fade and the red color should increase. So. I don't know what the original color of this is, but it would be fair to say that it'll become less yellow, more red. Okay, what color would the solution be if you added a few drops of NaOH to it? This is, there's a kind of obscure fact that you need to know to crack this one, and it comes from your solubility table. If you check on your table of solubilities, you'll find that most, most metal hydroxides are not soluble. If you look under OH, you'll see things like sodium hydroxide is soluble, potassium hydroxide, all the group ones, ammonium hydroxide is soluble. Most others are not, which means if you put OH in here, iron ions will react with it. That hydroxide will capture iron ions and turn them solid, which means these iron-3 aqueous are going to get captured and taken out of the solution, meaning, sorry, not what I was going for. I just want to clear away these arrows. Nope. Yes, there we go. So adding NaOH has the effect of pulling iron out of the solution. What will the system do about that? It'll try to replace the iron. Incidentally, it will make SCN, and it will do that by breaking down the product. So we'll gain iron, we'll gain SCN, we'll lose FESCN too. That means the color, the yellow will increase and the red will decrease. This will turn more yellow, less red. This is not an obvious reaction, and I didn't see it the first time I ever saw this problem. I had to fight with this for a little bit before I worked out what was going on. But when you add NaOH, the first thing you think is, there's no Na in this reaction. 
there's no OH in this reaction, maybe this won't do anything, but you have to look at solubility and sometimes you even have to do a redox list to figure out what reaction takes place when iron meets hydroxide. In this case it wasn't a redox, it was just the fact that if iron touches a hydroxide it turns solid and then you've lost it. It's no longer an ion and that means the ion, iron starts dropping out of the solution. Okay, what do we have here? Dihydrogen phosphate meets sulfurous acid and we get hydrogen or sorry, hydrogen sulfide, sulfite, and we get sulfurous acid and hydrogen phosphate and some heat. And they ask, if we add HPO4 2 minus, which is this one, what does the system do? Well, it'll want to consume this, so that'll go down. Everything on this side will go down, and everything on the other side will go up. It's always either left down, right up, or left up, right down. And you have to pick one that opposes whatever the stress is. So addition of H2PO4, I'm gonna just, I'll just put one arrow each. I'll say left side up, right side down. Or you could say that the equilibrium, the reaction goes to the left because the left side increases. Decreased temperature, if you took this container and put it in a freezer, that means you're pulling out heat. You can treat heat just like a chemical species and say we're taking it away. What does the system do? It tries to replace it. Up, 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 and on the other side, down, down. So, left side down, right side up, or we could say the reaction will go to the right to try to get equilibrium back. If we decrease the concentration of H2SO3, if this falls, the system will try to put it back. It'll make H2SO3 and HPO4 and heat. We'll lose HSO3 and H2PO4. So left side down, right side up, or you could say the reaction will go to the right. Try to replace that H2SO3. And finally, if we add H2PO4, well, if you have too much of this, the system will try to use it up. It'll use HSO3 at the same time. So left side down, right side up. Or you could say that the reaction goes to the right, the side that it's trying to increase. Oh boy, what do we have here? Some cobalt hexahydrate and chloride and heat turns into a cobalt chloride ion and water. What color would the solution be if it was worn by an external heat source? And they, they mentioned that this cobalt compound is pink, where this one is just blue. And they say if we're warmed by an external heat source, if you put heat to this compound, or this system, sorry, if you're adding heat, Le Chatelier's principle says we'll, the system will try to consume that heat and get rid of it. It will consume heat, it will use chlorides, and this at the same time, it will produce products. So what color will the solution be? Less pink, more blue. We're not sure what the original color was, but in any, any case, pink color will fade, blue color will increase.